and all the strengths that we had legally and everything came falling apart and Al Feldman started to fall apart because he had never lost a battle in his life. Um, in late July, I was part of a group of about 20 continental executives that went to a party that he had organized in his condominium in uh, Marina del Rey. And he told us, now he told us, listen to this, he told us that when his wife died, and she died about a month ago, a month previously, he said, I am going to fall apart. That from a top executive. And indeed, he did fall apart. On August the 9th, which was a Sunday in 1981, Al Feldman had scheduled a meeting with about 20 of Continental's pilots to see if we could figure out a way to stop Lorenzo. The pilots didn't finish their conversation with Feldman, and they said to, look, they said to uh, Feldman, can we see you this afternoon? Now, if you will, I'm going to tell you in a minute. Listen to Feldman's reply. He said, I'm very sorry I can't meet you this afternoon because I have a previous engagement. The pilots left. Al Feldman got in his car, went back to his condominium in Marina del Rey, had something to eat, came back to the Continental headquarters, and lay down on a sofa in his office. Before I tell you what the next part is, when he joined Continental, he said to me, um, do you have a really dramatic picture of some Continental aeroplane? So I said to him, yes, I do. I said, I recently shot some pictures uh, of our newest proud bird. This uh, was a Continental DC-10-30, and that was the one that could go non-stop across the Pacific. When I got it for him, he said to me, John, have two made. Bring one to my office and keep this one for yourself. When he had it framed in his office, he put it directly above the sofa. It was the same sofa, the same office that Robert Six had had. That Sunday, he went back to the office, lay down on the sofa underneath this picture, and put a pistol in his mouth and killed himself. Um, it was a very sad end to a very caring, he played a big part in our life. Um, he played a big part in our life, and uh, I, was, uh, I, was, I was devastated when he, when he did that. We, uh, even though Feldman was gone, we were urged by other people at Continental to orchestrate as many demonstrations as we could um, to stop Lorenzo. And one day the company hired six, six buses, filled them all with employees, and we were all bussed downtown LA. And um, we were trying to get Governor Brown to introduce some legislation to keep Continental Continental and out of Lorenzo's hands. Um, and that is just uh, part of, uh, part of um, you know, that demonstration. Unfortunately, nothing happened because uh, Lorenzo eventually um, persevered and everything uh, came to, uh, to a sad end for Continental. Um, before I close my presentation, I want to do two things. Um, there is a certain magic about flying, and when you sit in the cockpit of an airplane, you really get that feeling. And I'd like to read a ten-line poem that most airline people, especially flight crew, know. It's called High Flight. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-swept clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung, hung in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through the footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious blue, I topped the winds at heights with easy grace. Where near lark or eagle flew, and while with silent lifting mind I trod, the high, untrustful sanctity of space, I put my hand 
and touch the face of God. Um, gosh, I always get choked up when I, uh, when I read that. Before I close, uh, two things. When I was on LA radio, um, I was on LA radio for 16 years and I found that uh, many radio personalities had sort of signatures and I decided that my signature would be my socks. And when I finish here, if you want to ask me to show you, I will. Uh, on my left hand, I on my left hand, on my left on my left foot, I had a British sock, and then on my right, I had an American sock, and so I became known uh, in the uh, radio community as the sock guy. And the reason I did that was that I was very proud to have been born in England, but I'm even more proud to live and work in this great country called America. Um, After Mr. Lorenzo devastated Cardinal, a wonderful gentleman called Gordon Bethune came along. Gordon Bethune was with Cardinal from 1994 to 2004. Gordon Bethune took this airline from absolutely nothing and made it, according to Forbes magazine, one of the 100 best companies in the world to work for. <coughs> Not once, not twice, not three times, but five times. Um, he left, but during his reign in 1994, another gentleman who ended up being 15 years with Continental called Jeff Smizing came along. And Jeff Smizing is now the top gentleman at United. And I have a very good friend here called Anthony Toth who is sitting right there. Anthony Toth was the kind gentleman who um, supplied me with the billboards that you saw coming in then. I want to just share with you a very quick thing about Anthony. Anthony is a top executive with United. He's been with United 26 years. He has a high executive position with United. He has five people working for him. And he absolutely blew my wife and I away when he invited us out to the city of industry to see, are you ready for this? To see a 747 of Pan Am in his garage. <laughs> now, wait a minute, you say a 747 in the garage? Anthony has been an aviation aficionado like my wife and I all these years. And what he has there is the inside first class nose section of a Pan Am 747. It is absolutely amazing, and when my wife and I went there, my wife immediately went to the galley, and she said, honey, I feel quite at home here. I mean, it was absolutely extraordinary. And then as an aviation freak myself, Anthony said to me and my wife, he said, John, I want you to come upstairs. We went upstairs, and there my dear good friend Anthony has at a guest I would say 10,000 pieces of crockery and cookware and plates and sauces to do with about 30 different airlines around the world. So afterwards, I hope that you will go and talk to Anthony and ask how you can arrange to have a function um, at his aircraft. Okay, I'm going to uh, close this presentation with something that um, First of all, I want to thank all of you for coming. It's uh, been a pleasure having you here. Um, uh, I actually i am so in love with Continental. I, I love doing this kind of thing, and I would love to stand here for the next three or four hours, but I know you all have things to do. I'm going to close this presentation with a 60-second Continental Airlines commercial. And my question to Mr. Smizek, when you see this, please bear in mind this. Can Mr. Smizek inject what you will see in a minute, that same sort of enthusiasm that you will see in this 60-second commercial, can he inject into them, all the people at United who worked for United before Continental, can he inject into them the same kind of enthusiasm?
sort of, you know, standing on a precipice thing was when there was a possibility of a merger with Western Airlines. Uh, the interesting thing about that was that I personally think we would have made a good, a good marriage together. The reason we did that was that deregulation was coming in and we felt both of us would be a lot stronger together. However, um, the CAB and life events happened uh, that it didn't uh, work out. And thank goodness, Continental Airlines remained Continental. Thank you once again. Yeah. 